Okay. <clears throat> uh, today I want to talk about the uh, about an analysis. This was actually done with a high school student uh, almost a, a decade uh, ago. And it has never been published for various reasons. Uh, hopefully sometime it will see the light of the day. Uh, but the analysis is that uh, if you're aware, uh, when cars, race cars go, uh, they are on an incline there, the roads are banked. And what is the shortest path they should take so that uh, they can reach from one point to the other point in the fastest uh, possible way. Uh, so that's the idea. I, <clears throat> idea. So I'll call this the, uh, the word for this is brachistochron. Right? For a race car. This is just a technical word saying that uh, it is the shortest path uh, with respect to time, but, uh, not with respect to distance, it's with respect to time, it's the shortest uh, path. Just for uh, making, uh, for uh, being correct, uh, I think uh, this work was done uh, with a high school student, so that's Bradley Mitchell. Uh, and there is Osama Kali and Gautam. Uh, right. <clears throat> so, okay, so uh, let me begin by saying what is the brachistro uh, chrome? So, if you if you say uh, usually, brachistochron is uh, done uh, for uh, something falling on, under gravity. Let us say there is a surface. So this could be a surface. So there is an initial point and a final point. And if you have to uh, drop uh, or slide an object, right? So if you have to slide a mass m about uh, along this. Uh, curve and notice that if uh, if you say this is z, right, then the velocity is always two times g times uh, z. Right? That's because if there is uh, uh, we are also saying that this is frictionless. So if there is no friction, the potential energy due to gravity will always be converted into the kinetic energy and that makes sure that this will always be uh, true. So this will be called a velocity profile uh, in this discussion. So I'll call this velocity profile. So that means to say that uh, given a curve, I always know what is its velocity going to be on that uh, curve. And the question so we ask Would you is, like to call the z as the vertical distance instead of calling it as the vertical distance? Would you like to call it like from some origin? Because this, uh, like, I don't understand the way it is written. It feels like it is at the final point. But I think if the velocity profile is true everywhere, right? That. Yeah. Yeah. So isn't it like necessary to put an origin and then uh, measure z from there? Yeah, so I said the origin was here, but uh, if you want, uh, maybe if that helps, so say that's here to z. Helps. Yeah, like I mean, the vertical axis is z, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So gravity is acting down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the question is, uh, uh, the question you ask is if there were many curves, like one curve goes like this. In fact, uh, you could have one curve going like this. And if you have many such curves, it doesn't have to be uh, exactly true. So somewhere around this curve turns out to be the minimum time. So it likes to go down and then come back in. And it is not completely 
uh, intuitive uh, uh, which one it will be because as you go down you're increasing your velocity so you're increasing your uh, in, in your time significantly but then you're spending more time uh, because the distance is large so that is a as a compromise between the uh, two and uh, it turns out to be this uh, curve and i think the curve is uh, is a cycloid right so this is a cycloid this solution is a cycloid and this was first time uh, done by Bernoulli uh, and uh, that started the field. This was right, uh, right before or right after actually Newton gave his uh, calculus and it, this was an immediate application of it, uh, of calculus derivatives. And, uh, and it led to the idea of uh, calculus of variations, right? So that's the uh, whole idea. But here, now what we want to do is a very similar problem uh, since we are talking about a car, and when cars are going very fast, the back, roads are banked. And I'll simplify the whole situation. Let's say that is a cone. So this is a cone. And you have a car will be represented just by a mass. So even though I say it's a car, it's basically a mass going uh, a point mass if you want going around in the circles if i have a bigger car then i have to worry about whether it tips and the balancing uh, uh, of that all that has to be taken into account here we are just saying it is a sliding uh, situation and we have an angle theta naught let's say that's the angle that the cone makes so that so there is a particle going in in the in a cone and whenever there is a banking of the road, we know that velocity has to be less than g times gravity times r. Uh, that is, uh, I would like to say this is r. So that's my r, how far you're from the axis. And I will also say that's my z. Like how far, how high you are from the vertex of the cone, and how far you are from the axis of the cone. Those are the two distances. And using the idea of banking of the roads, we know that the velocity has to be less than or equal to g times r times tangent of theta naught. And there is friction also on this uh, <clears throat> on this cone. So instead of saying it is mu times s, let me use a notation that mu times s is nothing but tangent of theta s. So that way, this expression becomes a little simpler, and this just becomes theta plus theta s. And that's the square root of it. Okay. <clears throat> and this is if you go faster than this, it will slide out, right? So that's the idea of banking that uh, then the friction will not be able, friction and the normal force will not be able to support this motion anymore. And when we go very fast around a turn, you uh, slide away, right? Uh, and, uh, and that condition is it. But you cannot go too slow either if the banking is too high. If you go too slow, then you will slide inward. Right? That's also uh, necessary. So this has to be greater than or equal to g times r times tangent of theta naught minus theta s. Okay. So that's your uh, condition for neither going slide outward or uh, inward. And uh, so the point is the centrifugal force or the uh, is matching the gravitational force, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Centrifugal, or you can say that, uh, like centrifugal is a uh, like you can say the Pseudo normal force. force, right? So this is the normal force that is mg acting downward, and the fo now if you are going trying to go too fast. That the tendency is to go outward, yeah. then the friction will be inward. Right. 
so the centripetal force like the, or the acceleration has to be provided by these two forces the normal force and the force of friction theta of s is the contribution from here the force f and the normal force is theta naught right that's the two contributions right and if you write it in this using this it takes the simple expression usually in textbooks you write this as a tangent mu s times tangent theta naught divided by 1 minus mu s tangent theta naught that's how yeah, yeah. so but that's just it so so it has, it has to be less than this and if you go too slow then the tendency is to is to go is to is to go in so the friction is outward right this time normal force minus the force of friction has to contribute to the acceleration and that's this uh, this force. so it has to be somewhere uh, in between so if you want now we have to pick the velocity profile right when i'm saying brackets chacron of a cone of something going on a cone i have to give you the velocity profile right so the velocity profile i'm going to pick is that i'm going to think of a motion where we have a very skilled driver who manages to drive always at this edge the driver is going to always go at the maximum possible velocity he is an expert he or she is an expert and they are able to go at this velocity so our velocity profile will be v is equal to g times r Times tangent of theta naught plus theta of s. <clears throat> the important point is that here it is square root of r that is coming in, and I will show that the curve that we will derive here will be independent of this coefficient, that it, especially the coefficient of friction. It will be independent of the of the interface between the between the mass and that it will depend on theta naught but not on theta s so that will be an interesting feature that will come out as a conclusion but as of now we are just i'm just uh, formulating the problem we have a cone a mass moving so you have already decided that he will always be on the circular path at the same height all the time oh. Uh, let me add to that. I, that that would be a small approximation. Good point. Good point. But uh, this yeah here this v is always a tangential velocity, correct? So as we proceed, the I will be talking about a general velocity, and then when I say that this is always in this, so uh, once I have that equation, I'll make the approximation that the tangential velocity is very small compared to the compared to the uh, radial velocity. And in that approximation, I'll get a curve, which is pretty good. Uh, uh, it seems to be pretty good. Okay. So Go I'll ahead. make that approximation. Um, yeah, yeah, I would like to know what yeah. happens. Yeah, so, sorry, yeah. uh, basic thing. Uh, why is the banking, first of all? Why is there what? Banking, the theta naught. It's a racetrack, uh, Venkat. Racetracks are banked, uh, right? Why? why? Oh, banking is provided uh, to minimize this uh, role of friction in the. Minimize. Like, uh, the maybe I can motion. say that if you have an icy road, if a road is made up of ice, you cannot make a turn, right? It yes. is impossible yes. to turn. In fact, you yes. try to change lane, yeah. you will lose control of the car. So when you're driving, you cannot change lanes if the road is perfectly icy. Yes, yes, yes. So if that is the case and you do have to turn, then a banking of the roads allows you to turn, take a turn. Yeah. So theta in, S is a significant role, plays a significant role. Uh, theta of S is a friction, yes. Friction is important. Important, yeah. Yes, but this helps you with the friction, right? Even without friction, it is possible to take a turn. If you bank the roads. Oh. Like 
I think here it is clear. So the friction can provide this, but normal force also provides it. Okay. So for example, you can have no friction acting on it. So no wear and tear, at least in this direction, no wear and tear and still take the turn. That is what you usually do when you have banking of roads. There is no uh, wear and tear of the uh, of the roads because normal force typically is sufficient. So a pretty beautiful concept in the sense that a very it's very so such a simple idea, and uh, its application is uh, beautiful in a sense that, uh, it, and it is independent of mass. The mass cancels out. So you don't have to design the banking for trucks separately. You don't have to say that your truck will go at this banking and this will go at this banking. So it's a very simple solution for which is applicable to whether it's a car or a truck or uh, heavy vehicles and light uh, vehicles. And in a sense, I, I think a beautiful application of, of Newton's law in a sense in daily, daily life. Right. <clears throat> okay. So our question will be, so if you start from here and if you want to go there, uh, again, you can take any path. What will that path be? And we will find a proper full uh, analytical solution uh, for this. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? I mean, I think you show the further step, then I will have questions because your this tangential velocity is very much dependent on the radius, which is fixed by the which is yeah. fixed for a fixed height. Yeah, so uh, I, I will agree that there is that, uh, so it is not completely clean derivation in the sense that there is at one point that is this assumption. So yeah, so I'll agree to that. So good point, good catch. So, okay. So, uh, 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 so somewhere in between the details will be too messy, but I think I won't, I'll jump any important step. Okay, so so this is our velocity profile. That's good. So uh, on a cone, uh, what is the uh, ds? Right. Uh, this is an arbitrary distance. If I use cylindrical polar uh, coordinates, I have ds z square plus dr square. Right? R is the cylindrical uh, radius. And you have phi, which is r square, d phi square. Right, that should be uh, clear. So that's your uh, metric, if you want that. The, how you measure distances on a uh, on a just in three dimensional space uh, on uh, using cylindrical polar coordinates. Correct. But we are on a cone, so z is not completely independent. So we have R and Z like this. So this is Z, that's R, and that's theta naught. So Z is equal to R tangent theta naught. So DZ is DR tangent theta naught. So DZ is DR, so that is one plus tangent square theta. So Z can be removed then. That's secant square theta naught, the r square plus r square d phi square. I would like to think of the motion instead of thinking of it as prime. Angle is a good parameter to think of prime. So everything is happening with respect to angle. So pull out r d phi. So we have ds is equal to r times d phi. So that comes out. And for the remaining is 1 plus secant squared theta naught. And r dot square over r square. So I am using this notation that r dot is uh, dr by d phi. Usually dot is used with respect to time, but that seems dot is easier in this case, uh, uh, this convenience. Uh, hopefully it's not confusing. Okay, so that's your uh, any arbitrary 
small tiny distance on this uh, cone is described by that. Uh, this one. We, we are interested in time. So time would be equal. And actually this, uh, I will also use a notation that this is R d phi mu, right? So this whole square root is this mu. Right? So that whole square root will define it as mu. <clears throat> it's just a short form of it. So uh, dt, a small time. So we are interested, going to be minimizing the time. So dt will be equal to distance over velocity. Right? And velocity in general. So we have mu, which is dependent on r and r dot, right? Theta dot is fixed, so that's not a variation at all. And velocity is going to be dependent on r and phi. Okay. So a that's question? yes, question. So the uh, second assumption here is that the, what is this velocity? This ha has to be a general velocity, this right? This is the general velocity. This is Do you want to your, write it as different thing. notation? Can you write it as u or v, something else? So that we differentiate one point. And the second point is that uh, like this velocity, the assumption is that there is no acceleration. So this is a constant velocity model. No, always, right? Give me a second. Okay. Let me first do this. Oh, no, I got it. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is the normal definition. Yes. Let's say this is VT, right? That's what you want, right? Mm -hmm. Let's call that tangential velocity, right? And that's uh, okay. so VT. Yes. No, yeah, I get it. Yes. This is a general definition. Like this and is the actual definition of velocity. Yeah, this is velocity is equal to distance over time, right? So it is true whether it's accelerating or not, velocity is always defined. And time is got using this, right? And velocity is, has a profile of, uh, it's dependent on R and phi, but we are, yeah, uh, let me proceed. And at this point, it is very general. And so I would like to minimize this. So let's say we integrate this, right? So we integrate this both sides. Right, and that's your t. And let's say we go from dt. No, so t goes from initial to final, and ds goes accordingly, initial to final. And this is the same as initial angle phi initial to phi final, and r d phi times mu over v. Okay. Completely uh, <clears throat> uh, no assumptions here to here. And I am not yet told that velocity profile is this. So in that sense, it's exact at this point. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is a function of R, right? As a functional, if you want to say it's a function of R, and we are trying to find R as a function of R phi. But this is the step I'm going to jump here because this discussion, it is, it is really uh, not really insightful. It's the calculus of variation problem. We do this, we get a differential equation. Okay, so I'm just going to write that. It is an exact relation that comes in and the equation that leads to this is d by d phi of sine square theta naught times r dot over r. Let me check if I'm writing this. Oh, there's a mu also. So sine square over theta over mu. And that's equal to one over mu minus, and then there is one over mu again, and this is your velocity starting up, 
starting to show. So this is velocity as a differentiation of r and minus one over v dv over d phi. That's your uh, that's the term that you were uh, looking for. That's secant square theta naught divided by uh, Uh, times mu and r dot. Yeah, so that's a differential equation. So from here to here, it is a good bit of uh, a good bit of uh, steps, but uh, it's calculus of variation. And we have a differential equation. And one would think that oh, that's differential equation. This not uh, the nice part is that this has uh, nice. Solutions, uh, of course, this piece I'm going to neglect at this stage. Okay, so that's your differential uh, equation. <clears throat> okay, now at this stage, I say that uh, I have not yet given you the velocity profile. I told you that if you were to have banked roads, you can uh, velocity has to be less than or greater than. And now uh, I say, can I ask you a quick question before yes. you proceed? So yeah. uh, from this first uh, integral equation to this, you have used the calculus of variation, minimizing t. Yes. So varied t with respect to r and then set it equal to zero, right? Correct. All right. So this is your Lagrange's equation. Yes. Yeah. So yes, you can say Euler-Lagrange equation by the time you say, yeah. So this is a solution to variation in t with respect to r is set to zero right so that you see that if you want this is r pi, and that's a function okay so okay that equation implies this so, okay Okay, shall I proceed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at this stage, I invoke the velocity uh, profile. So I'm just going to say that it is in principle, if I want to change radius, I need to have a tangential velocity always, but I'm going to say that velocity in the radial direction, let's call that R, is going to be very much less than velocity in the tangential uh, direction. And in that sense, we have dv over d phi will be equal to zero. And for our case, for the profile that I was talking about, if you go at the maximum velocity always, this function r over v times dv over dr, this piece, because there is velocity in the numerator and there is a velocity in the denominator, that's basically nothing but dr, sorry, this is, yeah, d by dr of square root of r. And that's actually equal to one by two, exactly one by two. Um. Give me one second, I hear. So now you are saying that this V, which was supposed to be having both VR and VT, will not have the R component. It will only have VT component. And since VT goes like a square root of R, mm -hmm. this is what you will get. So notice the system is going to increase the radius but very slowly, it's dominated by Vt, but still I want a change in radius. So that's the approximation.
Okay, let's see. Le let's continue. If that's the case, notice this goes to zero. This is one by two. One minus one by two is one by two. So your equation becomes this, which is d by d five sine square not over mu not over r. By going to zero, that dv by d five, you are saying that it is negligible. That's all. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Like you can make this a better argument. Like there are there is a more detailed expression instead of saying this, but broadly that's what it is. <clears throat> like there's a more accurate approximation you can write uh, by saying that this expression in this expression you're neglecting them. So that can be, so the, in that case, it is not really one by two, it is approximately one by two. That is a one plus something. So you can write a series expansion there. So it is approximately one by two, that's what we're saying. <clears throat> yeah. And in that case, this equation becomes this. Uh, uh, I, I, actually, this is um, um, this is a bit tricky. Um, yeah, because R is a function of phi, right? Yeah, but this is partial derivative. Like there see. was a d by yeah. d phi that be, that is how you broke it into two. I see. Yeah. Like earlier, it was a total derivative, but then it became a partial derivative. So those things happen here from year to year. Like that. Right. <clears throat> yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Let's proceed. So with that, so that the equation becomes this, right? So it is d by d phi sine square theta naught over mu, and then let me make sure that I wrote the equation correct here. So that's is equal to one over q. <clears throat> and remember my mu was i think it's useful to write mu mu is one plus sine square theta naught we wrote it that side so it's r dot square over r square and the nice part was uh, that this is solvable, right? This is a uh, this has a nice uh, simple solution. Uh, basically, uh, what you do is that if you if you substitute sine theta naught r dot over r is equal to y, right? then this is one plus y square, right? and then there is this y inside in here, and there is one plus y square in this mu and this can be uh, uh, solved two times i mean there is a d by d phi also you can solve it i don't think uh do you want me to do the details or shall i add the solution no you can write the solution yeah so so that's so it's it's reasonably straightforward uh equations uh as far as differential equation but uh, the solution is equal to r as a function of phi. So there are two integral constants. So that's one is r naught divided by uh, cosine square, right? So that two is coming from this two. Okay. So if the velocity profile had, so v has the square root of r, right? If you by any chance say that no, I want a new elastic profile. 
I want to say R cube or something like just for fun. That will go there, right? So, uh, one over if it is n, one over n goes in there, and then there is this. Uh, <coughs> oh, by the way, I think I wrote this. Oh, sorry, sorry. So this was a typo everywhere. This was not sine. This was secant. Right, this was secant, right? So from there to here, for some reason, I started writing. And since I was not deriving it, I didn't catch it. Okay, so sorry about that. And that's where this cosine comes from. So one over secant is cosine, right? So when it goes on the other side, oops, cosine. So it's cosine squared. So that's two comes from here. And that is cosine theta naught over two, the same two here, times phi. So if you want, this is a constant, right? So that's the cone angle alpha over two, if you want, plus that is an integral constant, why not? That's it, that's your solution. But of course, if I provide you with a solution, I will give you some insight as to what should be the, so eventually if you're driving on a, on a banked road and you want, uh, you want to park, uh, which one uh, will it be? So let me, this cone, I'm going to spread it out, make it a circle, right? So that's your cone. Seeing from the top uh, view, that's the center of the cone. Let me think of a simple uh, situation where you start from zero and you want to come here, right? Let's say, let's make it equal uh, radius. You start from R initial, you come to the same R initial, right? And the circular region would be this, this is a circle. This curve is not really a circle. The idea is that you want to go in the inside. So you, as you go <clears throat> between initial and final, you want to go as much inside as possible, or not as much. There is a certain region you want to go so that you go and uh, come out. That's a simple solution if you want. Like it's like saying that cycloid, right? That's a solution. So this is the solution. But there is this interesting feature in this that, okay, that's good. But what if you want, uh, what if you want to go one full circle and come back to this point? Okay, that's also a possibly the same idea that you want to go to the center, right? So in that case, how it looks like is the following. So it will, it will go like this. The same idea that you're going towards the center. It's just that you have to make one full circle and then uh, come back, right? So as you go in, you go closer and closer, and then you come back uh, out there. So this will be pi zero to three pi by two, if you want. So that's, a, uh, that's how this uh, solution uh, works. So yeah, that's my presentation. And you can analyze this more. You can find uh, like for any arbitrary initial and final, you can get R naught and phi naught. So those are details in there, but the basic idea is that. So you drew a cycloid? No, this is not a cycloid. This is, I don't know what this curve is called. I uh, haven't seen this curve before. So think of it uh, like, I mean, if it is a racetrack, it is telling that you start from the, let's say it, you start on the, top of the racetrack and you will need to complete the circle completely one half circle and reach the top of the other side again mm -hmm. so the way to go is not to just go straight in that top circle instead you go down on the bank circle around there somehow and then come back to the top circle like so not completely circling at the bottom also but kind of having a, a curve yeah so uh, yeah that uh, but yeah, you can try to open it up and see what kind of curve it looks like. If you some open limit, it up, 
it should be a circular, right? I'm not sure. It's may it may because not the be. Velocity a... profile is different here, right? <laughs> or yeah, in some limit, you're saying this will be a cycloid. Is a cone? Uh, let me think. It's not exactly a cycloid. In the cycloid, you will need to have your uh, this uh, this height fixed, basically, like the diameter of this uh, circle is fixed. But that is not what is happening here. The Z is changing in this case. Yeah, like this is a problem, like you're saying that you have an incline because a cone can be opened up and it's an incline, right? So you're saying there is an incline and you're dropping, but there is a flat incline. So you can take any path there on that incline. And so for example, if this was the incline, so you can start from here and where is the, so what is this curve going from here to there? That's the equivalent part, I guess. Uh, will that be a cycloid? I, I guess think. that is why only I get, but it looked like a brick is to cone. Yeah, uh, yeah, back oh, yeah, when, is a cycloid, right? When theta naught is 90 degrees, it should be a cycloid, right? What does it mean? Yeah, it should be a cycloid. If theta naught is 90 degrees, then it is not possible, right? I so think that's not possible, correct? Then I cannot have not have any motion, right? So it's, yeah, it's the centripetal fast. force which plays an important role there for the velocity profile. So I cannot, if it is a cone of 90 degrees, then I don't have any motion, I suppose. I mean, I assume it's a point particle and some assumption. Like, uh, like when we are saying the Brachistochron problem, we are having gravity, yes. but we are, first of all, we are not having friction there, right? No friction oh. is there. Yeah. And we don't, so because there is no friction, we don't worry about the centripetal acceleration at all, right? So I, I would think that this is a different problem and in what limit will it be a Brachistochron? I cannot think of it. Actually, think of, uh, uh, think about it a little later. Like basically, open it and see when you come back on the same height, is it going to look like a brachistochrome or not? Uh, a check for this has been that if if theta naught is equal to zero, then it's a flat uh, surface, right? Yes. Right, and then we know that. The straight line is a solution. Right? A flat yeah, surface yeah, yeah. is straight line is a solution. So we should get that. And that I did check. So, so for example, if uh, first of all, if it is flat, this one by two is not there because uh, uh, because uh, uh, why is that not there? Help. Nope. You have to go back to the other side then. Uh, because, uh, because, <clears throat> uh, okay. V so V V is probably not varying with R. Um, Actually, yeah, so it's not that, uh, yeah, I, I didn't check it for a point going in circle at all. If it is flat, you say that if it is going with constant velocity, then the shortest path is the straight line, right? If you're going with constant velocity on a flat surface, the shortest path is a straight line. Right. So that we should be able to see in this. So I said V is a constant, so in that case, <laughs> then this is zero, right? V is a constant, this is zero, this is zero. So there's only one over mu. So there was a factor of two there. This two is not there. Okay, so that's for a uh, flat surface and constant velocity. Right? So if that is the case, then two is not there. This, I said, this two will not be there. So sine theta is one. So what we have is that R is equal to R naught times cosine of phi plus phi naught. Uh, that's a little confusing. Yeah. 
What is confusing? That uh, you, uh, like whatever said and done, there is a still the coordinate system R5 that you are using yeah. on the flat surface. Yeah. And you are, if you are changing the radius, your tangential velocity is still depend on square root of R. No, it's going in a straight line. No, no, no. It is not a straight line from the perspective of the way the problem is set. So it is started for, for, from a distance r. Mm -hmm. Like it's a flat surface, perfectly okay. But it started from a distance r from some center, mm -hmm. whichever center it was going. And it was going with a tangential velocity right. in that direction, right? Mm -hmm. But now you say that it is not, it is, it is not reaching from this point. It is, this is a flat curve mm -hmm. basically and it is going from this point to this point okay Correct. it goes from this point which to this part, point which part is the shortest part yeah but when it goes from this point to this point the radius from the center is still changing right yes, or no it's changing yeah that's changing so if it's it is changing no if it is yeah so if it is changing then how dv uh, over dr can be zero V is a constant. Radius is changing, but velocity is not changing. The particle going with constant velocity in a flat surface. What's wrong? Yeah, I guess I'm getting confused with like uh, we were. Uh, the, uh, I'm back. getting I confused with much, the coordinate system basically. Yeah, it is much more cleaner. See, we are just saying that V is a constant. That's all I'm saying. And theta naught is zero. So set this to zero. And V is a constant, these two terms go away. And in this coordinate system, it should come out to be a straight line. Yeah, probably I'm, I'm missing something. That's okay. Yeah, you can proceed. And then what I get is. So you get this solution, but then R, so expand this out. So you get R cosine phi, cosine phi naught, and minus R sine phi, sine phi naught is equal to R naught. That's your Y, that's your X, and that's a constant. So you can redefine this constant. You have Y is equal to mx plus c. Right. So, so in that sense, it's not a great check, but it's a one simple uh, check uh, on that. And I plotted this for various things. Seems to make sense, but yeah, I I don't know. Maybe there is a name for this curves. Uh, yeah, especially. Yeah, like uh, <clears throat> uh, in this gravitational field, it might be uh, some functions that are known, but I haven't looked into. Is, is there any uh, uplink? I mean, is there any uh, banking found in nature other than in race tracks? Oh, huh, good point. Uh, I don't know. Race tracks is something we develop, like. Oh, a banking we, is there on normal roads, normal roads, interstate. Okay. Again, we, we developed it. Yeah, I'm saying, you mean uh, natural? Yeah, it huh. must be naturally occurring somewhere, right? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, it may not be an, uh, a, something that, um, like, uh, okay, what do we mean by natural? Like, there might be banks, like banked paths, and some animal might be utilizing them for, uh, for their purposes. But, but we don't know whether it is like, so the point is if you are saying that if somebody is not constructing it or if they are actively constructing it other than humans. Well, I, I don't know, but the point is like, if there exists a bank, then there is a chance of utilizing it because Animals must have figured it out that this is the best way to go from one place to another place. 
motion yeah, is everywhere. I think probably uh, Venkat was thinking in terms of planets or something. No, I don't know. I don't no, no I don't is, think so. No, I yes. don't think so. I do, I, I think he was thinking exactly in terms of like uh, these kind of profile, not, profiles existing. I'm not thinking of, animals or planets. That's a wide range of motion everywhere. And gravity is everywhere. So we should have seen banking somewhere in this wide range of motions all over, everywhere. And that, this must have been the shortest path and this must have been followed. I don't know where this banking is other than in racetracks. Now only I uh, appreciate banking in racetracks itself. Yeah, I didn't know there was this banking phenomenon happening in racetracks. It's not only racetracks, like it is primarily for the may, uh, normal roads. For the? For the normal roads. Bank is course. given for normal okay. car driving. Wherever you are oh. making a curve. Curve, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the maximum speed limit you have and yeah, this this is the bank on the yeah on yeah. fast roads i think that's the way to but yeah this idea must have been gotten from the some somewhere i suppose did we get it man? did we get what did we get this idea just like that i think somewhere must have seen it you mean in nature? I think it's from Newton's law it comes out, I guess. Yeah. I think it must have been after Newton's discovery. Yeah, Newton's law is fine. Yeah, I'm saying. But yeah, but you're saying that did nature uh, take advantage of this somehow? Yeah, somewhere we must have seen this. Yeah, good point. There's uh, wide range of motion everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is this my tornado this in this direction? No, no. Is this why like there's a curve in tornado? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so why is tornado in this? Tornado having this shape? Yeah. I don't know. Good question. Uh, why is the tornado having this shape? Uh, yeah, it might be interesting if, uh, but I think it's the opposite, right? We are saying cone is fixed for us, right? There, the cone is dynamical. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, but something can be studied there. Yeah, something can be studied. But I don't know. It might be interesting, very interesting if, yeah. if tornado has something to do with. Uh, the solution. I'm. I just said yeah, tornado yeah, because yeah, I, I see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying point. there is wide range of nature and there are wide range of motions. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And there is this interesting story that uh, this Bernoulli is not our uh, fluid dynamics Bernoulli. He's father of the fluid dynamics Bernoulli. Ah, yeah. So, but the whole family. Yeah, it's well, in mathematics. Like yeah, yeah. Brother and father and everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. challenged Newton. Uh, like, uh, so he took yeah. weeks to solve this, and he challenged Newton. And right. Yeah, and Newton did it within a within a night. Within a night, yeah, he solved it. Next yeah. day, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Apparently, that is verified because uh, there were these letters uh, like yes, yes, yes. research very well because it's so yes, popular. Yes. Yes, yes. Based on his letters received, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It seems like he did it overnight. Overnight, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful story I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is impressive. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So. And this was given as a challenge. And <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He challenged Newton apparently. And Newton just solved it overnight. Yeah. yeah. At the time, Newton was in. Uh, uh, a judiciary system. He was not doing physics anymore. He was I see. I see. Uh, in judiciary system. He was doing some other job. Yeah, he was. Yeah, it was basically he was in charge of like he was the equivalent of RBI director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In India, we have this RBI director. Yes, he was yes, yes. made, in, and there is an interesting story there also. At least this is what I heard. Like one of the challenges they had was that they were, they, they were using coins, right? And People and it used to be gold and expensive material, 
so people used to rub this uh, like basically uh, to get some gold let imagine yeah, it is yeah. gold yeah, and yeah, yeah, rub yeah. and get some raw uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, gold out so newton apparently came up with the solution that on the coins make ridges on the coin okay to clarify that it has not been rubbed if you see oh. all the coins all the higher yeah, value yeah, yeah. coins they will have this ridges on the okay. end okay apparently okay. that was started by when newton was the director of the oh, oh, oh. <laughs> of this yeah. uh, uh, i think i don't know where what's the position that called Yeah, it is the equivalent of our RBI uh, Reserve Bank yeah. in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or here it will be the Feds. Yeah. yeah. So, is there a a, re, a a known thing that wind cannot? So, wind will be a stronger, uh, higher the uh, altitude, or like when higher it goes, like it will be faster and lower because of atmospheric pressure or something. Is there a is there a known thing that wind will be uh, calmer near the surface of the earth i think so like It's is typically, it, a... it typically it is uh, but it is very sharp actually uh, like the navier stokes equation doesn't it say that at the boundary it has to be zero but i think it is very sharp it happens very quickly but i don't know how far air how So oh, that could easy. explain why the you know, the funnel shape uh, of hurricanes will be there because if velocity cannot be faster, then the radius cannot be bigger. Oh, that explains your. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So, so the funnel takes the shape. Uh, yeah, the then it gets bigger uh, and bigger as it can go faster. But I am not sure about the first at, uh, point itself. Yeah, but good suggestion. I will have to think about that. Yeah, I cannot. immediately but good point yeah that would be cool if that is such a so that is a connection between the two solutions yeah nice yeah and the point is like yeah this is some kind of drag that will be coming into like this is a motion of particles basically air molecules and everything in there dust particles and everything and then they are having a drag from the next layer of air yes and dust so yeah i don't know it's kind of interesting yeah good